Hey everyone, I am super excited about this video because in this video I made a red velvet cheesecake. I am so happy with how it came out and it tasted so so good. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made it so let's get started with the video. You're gonna want to begin by tearing off a piece of parchment paper. Fold the parchment paper into a square. Once you've folded your parchment paper into a square, fold it into a triangle. Then fold it in half two more times. Place the tip of the parchment paper at the center of a spring form pan. Once you've seen how big your parchment paper needs to be, cut off any excess parchment paper. Make any necessary adjustments and then unravel your parchment paper to make sure it fits. Grease the bottom of your springform pan with either non-stick spray or butter, then place down your parchment. Grease the sides of your springform pan and then place parchment paper around the sides as well. Next, wrap the bottom of your springform pan in tin foil. This is the part that always messes me up when I'm making cheesecake, so this time I added multiple layers of tin foil. I made sure all the creases and crevices were covered so that not even a drop of water would seep into the pan. Once you've covered your pan in tin foil, test it. Make sure that your pan is absolutely leak proof so you don't have to go through the despair of seeing all your hard work go to waste just because of some freaking water. Make a practice water bath and then place your pan in there and leave it in there for about five to 10 minutes. If your pan keeps floating, place some clean heavy objects in the pan to keep it down. If no water leaks through into your pan, then you should be good. Or instead of wrapping your springform pan in tin foil, you can just place your springform pan in a slightly bigger cake pan. That way you don't have to worry about water leaking in. Wipe the water off of your pan and move on to making your batter. Next, add two eight ounce packages of softened cream cheese in an electric mixer. Mix the cream cheese until nice and smooth. When you're finished, scrape the sides. Then add 2 thirds cup of white sugar and 1 8 teaspoon of salt. Blend both together for about two minutes. Then scrape down the sides and add two eggs one at a time. Then scrape down the sides and add 1 thirds cup of sour cream, 1 thirds cup of heavy whipping cream, and 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, for this recipe I didn't use vanilla extract, I decided to use vanilla beans. I only used about a third of the vanilla bean. Once you've added all your ingredients, mix everything together until smooth. This part's optional, but as a little extra insurance, I added about 2-3 to three tablespoons of all-purpose flour into the batter. Adding flour into your batter helps prevent your cheesecake from cracking. Once 
When you finish mixing your batter, pour it into your spring form pan. Next, bang your pan on the counter a few times to remove any air bubbles. Place your springform pan in a roasting pan. Then fill the roasting pan with an inch of hot water. Now you're going to place your cheesecake in the oven at 325 degrees for 45 minutes. When your cheesecake has finished baking, take it out of the water bath and place it on a wire rack. Your cheesecake should be set to the touch but not jiggly. Let your cheesecake cool for about an hour and then once your cheesecake is cool, place it inside the freezer until it is completely frozen. I suggest making the cheesecake the night before so you can just let your cheesecake freeze overnight. Next, grease and flour two 9-inch cake pans. I totally forgot to flour my cake pans, but if you're wondering why you flour the cake pans like I did, it helps the cake better grip the sides of the pan so that it rises evenly. Set your pans to the side and in a large bowl add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Sift all these ingredients together. Give it a little whisk to make sure everything is well combined. And set your dry ingredients to the side. In an electric mixer, add one and a half cups of white sugar and one and a half cups of vegetable oil. Mix the sugar and oil together until well combined. Then add two large eggs one at a time. Once your batter is smooth, add one cup of buttermilk, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of white vinegar, and one fourth cup of red food coloring. Mix these ingredients together until well combined. Then gradually mix in your dry ingredients on medium low speed. Next, scrape down the sides of your bowl and beat on high speed for about 2 minutes. When you're finished, scrape down the sides of your bowl again and then pour your batter evenly between the two pans. Don't forget to bang your pans on the counter to remove any air bubbles. Now place your pans in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. When your cakes have finished baking, poke the center with a toothpick to make sure that they're done. Then let your cakes cool in the pan on a wire rack for about 10 minutes. Next we'll be making our cream cheese frosting. 
In an electric mixer, add two 8 ounce packages of softened cream cheese. Then beat the cream cheese until smooth. Then add a half a cup or one stick of softened unsalted butter. Scrape down the sides and add a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Then gradually add two and a half cups of powdered sugar. Mix everything together until smooth and creamy and make sure that you don't overbeat it. I may double the amount of frosting because I plan to decorate the cake, but if you're not planning to decorate the cake in frosting, then you don't have to do that. Now we're going to level our cake by cutting off a thin layer of the top. We're just going to cut off that roundish part of the cake so that our cake is flat. Make sure to level both cake layers and when you're finished, you can take out your cheesecake. Your cheesecake should be frozen by now, so you can go ahead and take it out of the springform pan. Slide a knife under the parchment and remove your cheesecake from the pan. While I was trying to remove the cheesecake from the pan, I might have broken it. Anyway, place your cheesecake on top of your red velvet cake layer. Just because the cheesecake broke does not mean I'm not going through with this cake. It was still edible, so I just decided to mend it together. This is why I recommend to let your cheesecake freeze overnight because I only let mine freeze for like a couple of hours. Now you're going to add your second red velvet cake layer top side down. Next, using your frosting, apply a crumb coat layer onto your cake. Adding a crumb coat basically means that you're going to use a spatula to coat your cake in a thin layer of frosting. Once you finish evenly applying your crumb coat, you're going to place your cake in the freezer or the refrigerator for 30 minutes so that your frosting can set. Meanwhile, you can go ahead and prepare your piping bag. Test out different piping tips to see which one you want to use on your cake. Once you've found the piping tip that you want to use, you can finally start frosting your cake. Since I'm still a beginner at making and decorating cakes, I just wanted to do a simple decoration. I didn't want to do anything too advanced, so I decided to make a bunch of swirls on the cake. With the right piping tip, the swirls look like roses. I think when you decorate your cake like this, it's called a rose cake. By the way, I forgot to buy a cake board, so I tried using a plate instead, but the plate got in the way while I was frosting, so I got rid of it after a while. Basically, you're just going to frost a bunch of swirls onto your cake until it is completely covered. Then fill any gaps with a dash of frosting going the same direction as the swirl it's next to.
And this is the cake when I finished. It looks so pretty. And this is the finished result. And I have never been more proud of a cake in my life. It's so pretty and elegant and pretty. Plus the red velvet cake layers were so moist and delicious. The cheesecake tasted great. It was creamy and sweet and just overall perfect. I was afraid in the first half when it broke, but it ended up being fine. The frosting paired with everything so well. It was really good. The whole cake is a 10 out of 10. It was absolutely delicious. One of my favorite cakes ever. This is the first time one of my cakes has come out so well. I mean like really, really well. The first time I made a cake, I didn't know how to frost it, so when I made the crumb coat, I couldn't fix it, and you could see all the crumbs in the frosting. Not to mention the fact that I didn't know how to level a cake, so the top was round and the decoration was kind of off. The second time I made a cake, the cake was dry and the frosting was grainy. Basically what I'm trying to get at is this isn't really my first time making a cake and I still made mistakes throughout the whole process. but. What's important is to not give up and to learn from your mistakes. Because after a while, you'll eventually get the results you want. By the way, the cake decorating tools and the recipe I used in this video will be down in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!